Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new here, welcome. This is David's Closet. Um, I typically review handbags and talk about bags and other accessories. Um, apologize for this, as usual. Hat means the hair is a mess and comfy shirt because I'm exhausted. It's been a long week. Uh, my sister's wedding was this last weekend and then, of course, work has been crazy. So, um, this video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos. I am going to show you some bags, but it's not going to be a review about a specific bag or an unboxing. Um, I actually had a comment, and at some point I'll throw it up here, and I will blur the user's name out. Um, I'm not sure what the protocol is for that, but I feel like that's something you probably should do. Um, and it was asking about, you know, some topics that I should discuss, and some of them were already on my list of videos to make, and some of them weren't. Um, I know you guys don't know, but I'm usually about two to three videos ahead, and since I do bi-weekly, that usually means I'm about a month ahead on filming. Um, so when things like this, people start asking for things, I do read the comments, and I try to make the videos. Um, I don't like to disturb the order of videos that I already have uploaded and waiting to premiere, but um, sometimes I do bump them around depending on urgency or just timelines. For example, my Tate video on my Coach Tate um, since that bag was just released, I bumped that up, pushed everything out, vice versa. But this comment was great. Um, first off, it was exciting to know that people are finding my channel, subscribing, commenting. Um, I know I don't respond to all of them, but I do try to read all of them. Um, it's definitely important to me. Um, it's also nice to see other men out there who are interested in the same thing. Um, and I love how the comment indicates, you know, like, you don't have to look like a Mac model, basically to be interested in these things. And that's one of the reasons I want to make this channel. I'm an everyday average human and um, I just happen to like bags. So I'm glad that I found users out there who are the same. Um, so today we're going to kind of talk about being a man in a woman's world. Um, it's a little bit play on words here, um, seeing that the handbag luxury community typically is uh, more female, um, which is really cool to be a part of it on the other side. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, about the stigma of, you know, being a man with a bag. Um, we're going to talk about my collection of men's bags. I'm going to use that term loosely, as well as how these designers and brands kind of differentiate what is a men's bag versus what's a women's bag. And then I also am going to jump in briefly just to some of the collections on the men's bags. Um, I do want to do collection videos in the future, so I'm not going to go too deep into that right now because I think that could be its own video. So um, stay tuned and we will get to that. Um, but before we do, we are going to do bag of the week. And I love my speedies. I'm still carrying this bad boy. I was carrying my 25. I don't think you've, yeah, you have seen yet. That video will be up. Um, so my Speedy 25 from 93, been carrying that, but we're getting some rainy fall transition weather. So I switched to this because this can get wet and she'll be fine. Um, but I wasn't kind of done with the, with the Speedy vibe. So this is the bag of the week. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is probably just like the social stigma. Um, so I live in quintessential Midwest, USA. Um, it's a fairly major city for the Midwest, but not really. Um, I can honestly say I've never really felt super uncomfortable wearing a bag. Um, but there have been a few times where I struggle a little bit. Um, so for example, there's still, even today, there are still certain places I will not take my bags into. I'll just carry like a wallet with me. Um, and that's because I don't want anyone to say anything. I don't know if anyone in those places would, but I want to avoid that because A, that would upset and hurt my feelings. And it could just be very uncomfortable for me. 99% of places that I take it and I don't care. Um, so what kind of started this was, uh, even as a child, I always loved bags and I would see them. My mom would have one, you know, my sister. And of course I didn't. And 
I was always a little jealous and I will say, I have always said that it's very unfair that men are expected to fit everything into a, you know, like two to three inch by two to three inch leather cube and then sit on it. So I was always very like jealous of people who could have bags. Not only were they functional, but they're also very pretty and they're cute and they can kind of, you know, show a little bit of their style. Um, and as someone who never has been interested in clothing, as you can tell by my attire on all of these videos, um, clothing is not something that's important to me. Um, not really a big fan of shoes. I do have one pair of really nice designer shoes, um, a pair of Christian Louboutins, uh, but they're not my thing. I have one pair of nice shoes. That's really all I need. I show my style from my bags. So when I finally decided to start wearing them, the first one I ever bought was this, just coach messenger bag, it's from the outlet. I was in Los Angeles, it was a trip for my college graduation, and I picked that up, I think it was like 69 or $79 on sale, and I put it in my closet and looked at it probably once every couple of months, put it on, walked around the closet, and then put it back in its box. Didn't look at it. Uh, a couple years later, I received a wallet for Christmas that I had picked out and my mother-in-law bought it for me actually. And it was a little bit too big to fit in my pocket. I apparently didn't read the dimensions when I picked it out online. Um, so I started carrying this brown messenger bag because it fit in here and it matched. Um, and that's kind of where it started. Um, I will say, I, didn't worry as much carrying a messenger bag as I do a purse, like going into certain places or just feeling uncomfortable sometimes, but um, still a lot of, you know, concern going into certain places, restaurants, shops, carrying a bag on your hip, wondering what people think. Um, but there's also a point where you just have to say, screw it, I don't care. Um, and that's kind of what I did. And then it spiraled. I have my messenger bag collection way down since I don't use them primarily anymore. Um, I have sold a lot of them. I do find that the men's messengers sell really good online for on sites like Macari or Poshmark, eBay. Um, my handbags, I can't sell them. I can't give them away, I feel like. Um, but these men's bags really do sell well. And I think part of it's because there's not a lot to choose from. Um, and I guess that's kind of the next thing we'll go into. Um, this is pretty much all you got. Most of them are squares with either a flap or just a zip. They're, you know, one to two inches thick, 12 by 12, 11 by 11. That's it. They all look the same. Louis Vuitton has some that look just like this, but it's in their monogram canvas. They have some in their, um, I believe it's the Epi leather, um, but every designer's bags look very similar, and I'll throw a bunch of them up here. Um, so not a lot of variety, and that's that's frankly why I kind of got over them very quickly, because as you see when we go through my collection here, they all look the same. Whereas handbags are all different. I mean, there's a lot more to them. A, they're bigger, you can carry more. They're cuter, they're prettier, they have more detail. It's a win. Um, but you know, I, even carrying purses, I will say I have never been, or I've never heard anyone make any comments. I've never heard anything necessarily negative about it. Um, the only comments I hear occasionally, and I heard it twice, just a couple weekends ago, we went to a holiday fair, uh, where they have like the Christmas booths and stuff. And of course this year due to COVID, it was very sad and about half the size it normally is. But this is in a very... I call this like a very progressive part of my area. And I was carrying my Louis Vuitton Turin MM, love her. And I was at, or complimented on twice for being a good husband for carrying my wife's purse. So that was a little bit odd. I don't think it was malicious. I mean, I just informed them, oh, thanks, you know, don't wanna deal with it. Um, but then on the same side, I was in my hometown, which is a very small rural community, and I was carrying my Speedy 30, and I got two compliments saying that it was super cute. Um, so I guess it really just depends 
I always have to say, you know, not to get too like, you know, you know, up on my soapbox, but part of it is the energy you put out. So I've really had to, and even today, I mean, I've been carrying handbags for over a year now. I just have to say, you know, F it, I'm doing it, here it is. Um, and you kind of put that energy out that you don't care, and I don't think most people will say anything because, of course, people say something because they want to get a rise out of you. But if you just kind of have the mentality of you can have your opinion, that's fine. People tend to stay quiet. Um, I hope I'm going into this enough. I hope I'm giving enough detail for you guys. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I... Yeah, I just really haven't had that many issues, if any. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 my story right now. Um, that could change, but yes, is there a stigma attached to this? Absolutely. I know I get stare, I get looks all the time. Occasionally, I'll walk through a crowd and you'll see some old man look over and do a double take, kind of like that, and it's like, okay, thanks, congratulations, you know. Um, but you just have to be able to tell yourself that that's expected and if this is something you want to do you're going to have people look at you um of course growing up you know a closeted little gay boy in the middle of nowhere um that was not an uncommon feeling for me so maybe that's why i'm not as hurt or influenced by those stares and looks um but i do want to quickly go into my messenger bag collection like I said, I've sold about five or six of them, and if I can find some pictures of some of the ones I've sold, um, I'll keep this in the video. But uh, my very, very first one, like I said, was this, I think it's called like the Charles Messenger Bag, Flight Bag. Um, they do keep it stuffed, of course. It came with the hang tag. It's basically just a black hole. There's one zip pocket and one slip pocket. It has just like the seat belt strap and silver hardware, which I love silver, silver hardware, especially on brown, I, I'm a big fan. Um, but it also has a zipper pocket right here. Um, this one does hold a lot. I use this when I go to like wine tours and stuff because it's really good leather. It's been beat up now because I did use it a lot eventually. Um, but this bag can take anything and it only gets prettier with use and it gets softer with use. So this is one I will never get rid of. Um, don't use her as much, but this is the most basic messenger bag you'll ever see. And it looks like every other one that every designer has. So I have this one. Okay. These are in no particular order now. Um, I guess actually before I go into this one, I'll talk about some that I know I, I don't have anymore. This is, I believe, also called like the flight... Charles bag. They both have the word Charles in them. If I can find the name, I'll put it down here somewhere. Um, but I had this actually in two colors. One was the monogram canvas with the, I think it's called graphite, black and gray, silver hardware. And then I had it in the um, embossed uh, dark navy blue leather with silver hardware. Loved that. And I did sell those. I actually made money on those though, so I can't complain. This one, I keep it in a little dust bag because it's very special to me um, for no really apparent reason. <laughs> it's just a Michael Kors uh, monogram canvas bag. Um, it's my understanding this would be like the like the retail Michael Kors. Um, I think. The monogramming is very faint and almost honestly just looks black and even in the pic video here it's coming off black but it is very lightly the MK monogram now this guy is little and he's itsy bitsy um, but I wanted one of these forever and of course they discontinued this style and this size um, in this exact bag I almost bought one that was blue when I first started buying bags on Poshmark I believe and it was on sale for like $59. And of course I hem and hawed over it, asked too many questions about the bag. I was too afraid just to pull the trigger and it sold. So I told myself if one ever came available again, I would buy it. And I will say I bought this around the time I started carrying handbags. So I knew it wouldn't get as much use. Plus it was very small and even my messenger bags, I need something big. Um, but I bought it because I think it's so cute. It's the perfect size. I do use this occasionally on vacations, 
you know, just things where I don't really need to carry a lot, but I still want a little bit of a bag. So we have her here. Okay. And I have this one, and this was my first, not square, messenger. And it's actually a camera bag. But here it is. This was from the outlet, and I believe this was intended to be an outlet piece. Um, but um, the canvas, of course, the two pockets. This bag definitely carries more than most. Um, and I like the shape better than the squares because A, it's more handbag-like. And with the squares, if it's up to here, you can't shove stuff all the way to the top because then you have to dig through it all. And of course, these messenger bags are only an inch thick. So, you know, coming this thick, if you have it piled to the very top, you have to dig through and pull stuff out all the time. It's a pain in the rear. So I like them to be a little bit shorter. After I bought this, I realized this was a good shape. It's a little bit shorter. It's about probably three or four inches shorter. A little bit thicker. And instead of being tall, it's thicker. And there's two pockets. So you can kind of put things you use more often in one. Things that you don't use as often, like my key fob. You know, things like that in another pocket. So, <laughs> excuse me. So I really like this one. Um, I was going to sell it, but my husband said he likes it. And since it is one of my faves, I figure I'd keep it a little bit longer. I won't lie, if he doesn't use it, or I don't use it, I think I am going to sell it. They still have these occasionally at the outlet, so I think I could get a little bit uh, higher price for it if I resold it. So, there is this one. And I'm sorry, this isn't a really in-depth review. I plan on doing that someday. I just kind of want to review these with you guys. Um, this one actually is a retail bag from Coach. I think it's called the Dylan or something. If I can find a name, I'll put it here. Uh, they had this in a really pretty blue, like teal color, a really dark teal. And I wanted it, but I could not justify the price at the retail store. Um, years after these bags were discontinued, I feel like I found this in the outlet for like $150. So I did buy it. It has the Coach Creed on the front. It's not very thick. It's about the same thickness as all my other ones, but it's a little bit longer but not quite as tall. So it's kind of a mix between the previous one and my original ones. Um, but I just thought this is so pretty and I will say the the build difference is different. Um, I always say that I don't really care about retail versus outlet bags, but this one definitely is better quality than the previous two that I had sold that were outlet bags. Now this one has a special space in me heart. I will never get rid of this one. Um, I don't use it though, and even when I was carrying solely messenger bags, still didn't use it because it's too solid. So it's just like the first brown coach one, except this is the structured canvas, and this is just a Michael Kors, and this this is from like the retail boutiques. Um, I bought this at Caesar's Palace in Vegas. This was not an outlet purchase. Um, so. You know, it lifts up and it's really structured and then it just has the one opening with a few little pockets inside and then there is one slit pocket in the front here. Um, has all the Michael Kors stuff. Um, this bag, we went to Las Vegas with my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, and she had saved up and was buying her first Louis bag. And of course this was before I started carrying him bags. And, I really wanted something that wasn't just from the Coach Outlet, because at the time that's all I'd had. I found this. This is the only one they had in stock. I think it was $495. Ridiculously overpriced for what it is. But my husband bought it for me as a one-year anniversary, if I recall. Yeah, one-year anniversary for our wedding. Um, yeah, and it does have a slip pocket back here. But again, it's the very subtle MK monogram canvas um, it has like the gunmetal hardware and then the little creed on the front is just black metal this one like i said least used bag of all times but it is very special to me that my husband bought it for me so i don't see it leaving my collection ever so this was the last messenger bag i ever bought i know that for a fact the small michael quarters was right before this when we moved into this house um, 
I also got a job promotion around the same time, so we each agreed we would treat ourselves to something, um, you know, within reason, thousand dollar range. Well, Prada had a messenger bag that I wanted, so I bought her and I used this for Vegas vacations. So it's just the nylon Prada messenger. Same dimensions as pretty much every messenger bag. This is probably the same as the retail coach bag. About an inch and a half thick. I think it's like 10 by 11. So it's barely, you know, not a square. It has the big zip pocket. I'm not going to unfold it because these handles are kind of hard. The handles do say Prada on them subtly. Um, I love this bag. I love Prada. Prada is my favorite designer. Um, so I did want this. It's just the nylon with the Stafiano leather accents. I believe when I bought it, it was like $1,050, um, which is absurd for a messenger bag, um, but it is Prada. So they do have luxury designer messenger bags too. So what I'll do now, because um, I'm not good with editing videos, I'd love to do like a side-by-side -side where I'm going through all of these. But I'm going to throw up just some pictures of, you know, some of the other designers' collections that I'm seeing right now. Uh, these are all going to be current bags that you can buy. I'm going to throw screenshots of them up. And, you know, I really wish that these designers would do more for the men's lines. And or stop putting labels on their items. So... For example, it upsets me to a point when I go to like Louis Vuitton, Christian Louboutin, um, you know, Dior, and I'm looking for bags and you have to click for her or for him. If you do for him, it pulls up, you know, three to 10 square bags and that's it. But if you go for her, it's 7,000 options. So I do wish that these designers would kind of drop the label and realize that anyone can carry a bag. A bag is not made for a woman. A bag is not made for a man. There are pieces of leather, canvas, and stitching. They do not have gender. Um, and this is not a place to debate, so if you have another opinion, that's fine. You can have that. This is mine. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there who feel the same. So for me, that's definitely a hang up. Um, you know, even when, when we went to Vegas recently, uh, about three months or four months ago, I always stopped by all the luxury shops and even going into the Prada store, you know, of course they're like, oh, would well, you want to look at the men's stuff? And it's like, no, I want to look at the bags. Or Louis Vuitton, they have the men's and the, the Caesars forums, they have the men's store and the women's store. And I always go to the women's store because they have the handbags. And every single time I get asked, oh, are you shopping for someone special? No. <laughs> yes, me. So I do wish that they would just drop that because more and more people are, you know, opening themselves up to things. Um, so that's my personal opinion. Um, drop the labels. Same thing happened even at the outlets. Um, I'm going to take Kate Spade. Immediately when you walk in, oh, are you shopping for a, a girlfriend or a wife? No, I'm not. I'm shopping for myself. <laughs> and I actually did get a little offended at that one. I don't know why. I think it's because it was the last stop of the trip and I just walked out of the store. So if you're a sales associate at one of these stores watching this video, please remember that these things are not gender specific. Don't assume. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. So um, while I'm talking about this, you will have seen some of the video or pictures of the current collections. Um, I'll probably put some comments on the screen as well, but yeah, I definitely just, just think that, you know, if I had to give advice to someone who's, was in my shoes, you know, a man that wants to be comfortable, that really loves, loves these things, but either doesn't have any yet, or maybe has gotten the courage to buy some, but they're sitting in a closet, do what you feel you need to do inside. Um, you know, if, if that's, something that you want, then you should be able to do it and who cares what people think. Um, now I'll say do that safely. Um, you know, if you're in a situation or somewhere where it is physically dangerous to your life to do something like carry a bag, then obviously use your judgment. But 
yeah, you know, just, you have to say F it. <laughs> Who cares what they think? As long as you love it, that's all that matters. So, do it. Buy it, carry it, love it. Before you know it, you'll be obsessed like me and you'll have too many. So, I hope that this video was helpful um, to the subscriber who commented, thank you. I really enjoyed your comment. Um, I love that I'm reaching an audience that I intended to reach. I thought this channel was very important because I know there's other guys out there like me. So, thank you. I hope I addressed things enough for you to keep your interest and keep your subscription. Um, I will continue to do more videos as things come up. Um, like I said, once I get through my closet and I kind of review all of my bags, I really want to start breaking down and doing, you know, collection reviews. So if there's a new Louis Vuitton men's collection, I'll do a review on it. Um, and someday I'll learn to do the split screen with the video of me scrolling through my phone. Um, I'll play around with that. But um, thank you for the comment. And thank you everyone else for watching. Um, I hope that this video was entertaining. I hope that you learned something. If there's anything else you'd love to hear about, please comment it below. Um, like I said, I do read those. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much. Um, sorry this ending's all over the place. It's my normal MO at this point. Um, thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe, comment, um, share this video, have your friends subscribe. Um, thank you so much and have a good day.